Good morning. This is Russ and Kitty Walden with Father's Heart Ministry, and this is the Daily Prophetic Word. One of the goals that Kitty and I, my wife Kitty and I, have is to initiate a dialogue among believers regarding the ministry of the prophet. And we do that by posing the question. Second Chronicles 20, 20 says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe the prophets, so shall you prosper. Now, predicated upon that verse, we ask the question, who's the prophet in your life? If you don't know, it's because you don't have one. Now, what if somebody, most, many people would say, well, I don't know that I need one. Well, the, most Christians would acknowledge the need of a pastor. What happens if you met a fellow believer and when you suggested and asked them the question, well, who's your pastor? I say, well, I don't have one. Oh, oh really? You're between churches? Uh, no, uh, I don't know that I need a pastor. Uh, you might think, well, that's their option, but uh, offhand, you might kind of think perhaps when they were in a time of need, they would have wished they had a pastor to speak into their uh, life. But it's because we understand the ministry of the pastor. We understand the leadership of the church through the pastor. But what about the prophet? Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12 mentions apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Not just the ministry of a pastor, but five ministries altogether, and it does not delineate the ministry of the pastor and say, now this one is non-optional, but all of these others, like if you buy a car, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, a teacher, they're kind of like a, a sunroof. You don't have to have one, but a pastor, he's like a steering wheel or tires. That's non-optional equipment. You have to have them. It's interesting that in, when Jesus gave the gifts of ministry to the church, he didn't set aside the pastor as uh, non-optional non and the other ministries of which we're advocates for the prophetic and say, well, you can take or leave uh, the prophet. And of course, many theologians would say, well, that's Old Testament. We don't need them anymore. And so if we say we don't need the prophets anymore, I would suggest this to you. If you look in the New Testament, in the New Testament, there is a mention one time of pastors, one time in all the New Testament, 73 times throughout the New Testament prophets are mentioned. Prophets are mentioned throughout the Bible 255 times, and including both Old and New Testament, pastors are only mentioned nine times. Now, I'm not suggesting to you that a prophet is more important than a pastor because that would not be true. What I am suggesting to you is that the primary role of leadership as proposed in the Bible is that of a prophet, is that of the prophetic. And so who is the prophet in your life? We claim to live a biblical lifestyle. We claim to embrace uh, biblical values, but yet people many times uh, do not have a clear understanding or even a suggestion in their hearts or how they've been taught that there is any need for them to have a prophet to speak into their life. Now, what's the purpose of the prophet? Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 says that the fivefold ministry, including the prophet, is there for the perfecting of the saints, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. So it's they're there with the other five ministries to perfect you to do the work of the ministry that we commonly consign to the institutional church. Church culture says the ministers are a separate class, and within that class there are these ministries, usually the only ones we recognize are pastor and evangelist, and those do the work of the ministry for us. That's not what Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 says. It says those five ministries are there for the perfecting, and that word is maturing, for the maturing of the saints so they can do the work of the ministry and grow up into the full measure of the stature of Christ. Back in the 60s and 70s during the charismatic movement, uh, that's one thing the early charismatic movement really got right. They believed in body ministry. And so for us, uh, we want to just bring that question to you. Who is the prophet in your life? 
If you don't know, it's because you don't have one. And if you don't have one, then you are not a recipient of what Second Chronicles 20.20 talks about. Believe the prophets, so shall you prosper. Uh, people many times rail on the prophetic and say it's just all about profiting with prophets. Well, in 1 Corinthians where it talks about prophecy and prophets, Paul said, how shall I profit you unless I speak with the understanding? In other words, he was contrasting speaking in tongues and prophecy. He said, how shall I profit you? See, the gifts of the Spirit are there to profit you, to edify you, to comfort you, to encourage you, to exhort you, to bring you into your destiny, to speak into your potential, and to see that potential realized. So today the Father says, stay focused on your calling. Make your calling and election sure. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Do not make the mistake that Peter made. He squirmed when I asked, do you love me? He looked at John and he demanded, what shall this man do? The father says, it doesn't matter what others do. Just as it didn't matter when Jesus spoke to Peter, it didn't matter what John was going to do. His responsibility was to respond to my voice. Though others may go glibly on their way without any accountability, the father says, that is not your portion. Are you willing to be an accountable son? Are you willing to be an accountable handmaiden? When you gave your life to me, I took you at your word, and I have been working to mold and to shape you into my image. Much of the pressure, says the Father, that you have at times sought to escape in life has not been the pressure of the enemy, but rather it has been my hand turning you on the wheel of the potter. Shall the thing say, the thing made say to the thing that made it, why have you made me thus? I am the potter, beloved, you are the clay. When you look around, you will see the garish, painted, broken shards of unwilling vessels. They chose to step off the potter's wheel because the demand was too great. They painted themselves with lofty, gilded opinions of their own greatness. In reality, they've been marginalized by their own self-deception. They preen themselves like spiritual peacocks and remark how kingdom-minded they are, but nothing will change for them till they get back on the potter's wheel and allow me to finish in them what I started. So stay flexible, beloved. I know the path that you take. It is my hand forming and shaping you. There will be a finished work in you. So trust me. Stay so obedient to me and you will reach your full maturity in my kingdom. What a powerful word. God spoke to me. This year was a year of accountability. The great liability of the body of Christ is unaccountable sons. Accountability first begins by you holding yourself accountable to your own walk with God, and then seeking out those relationships of accountability that promote who Jesus is on the inside of you. If you would like to receive personal ministry, if you would like to connect with us, or maybe you want to explore the overture of the prophetic through Father Sark Ministry, go to propheticnow.com. And there are many resources there. You can uh, t take advantage of prophetic and biblical dream interpretation. You can receive a personal prophecy. You can subscribe to the Daily Prophetic Word in your inbox. And uh, all of these resources. You can uh, you can fly in to Branson, Missouri, where our ministry headquarters is, for a mentoring weekend where it's just one-on-one -on -one with Kitty and I, and we pour into you through a powerful two-day mentoring experience. Uh, we are advocates for the prophetic, and we want to speak into your life. We want to, our task, our goal is to raise up a relevant prophetic culture. So go to prophetic now. Dot com and look in to those resources that are available to you there. God bless you. Have a great day.